Ready? Okay, it's 1 30. It's time of the record for a uh, planning hearing today. We're going to hear uh, file VA 0036 21. And before we start, um, is there anybody that has any hearing or or uh, visual impairment that might be smell? And Scott? No? Okay. Nobody? Okay. Um, let's quickly go over. Uh, for those that haven't been involved in, in a hearing like this, what the hearing looks like, staff's going to go ahead and present a report. Uh, the applicant can also get up and, well, in this case, it's the appellant. Uh, anyway, someone's going to get up and uh, <laughs> provide an overview of, of why we're here. Um, then we'll open it up to public testimony. Um, we'll start out with those in support, those neutral, and those uh, um, opposed. Everybody gets three minutes. Um, try to keep your... Uh, your words to the actual subject matter, kind of to wear, wear you off. Everyone's going to misbehave and treat each other with respect. No personal attacks, unless it's personally attacking our attorney, then that's okay. I'm just kidding. That's not okay. And then there'll be an opportunity for the for rebuttal, and then we'll close uh, public comment, and the commissioners will deliberate. Um, for the record, uh, Commissioners Conley and Commissioner McDonald are present today. Commissioner Bradshaw is excused. Um, with that, we will go ahead and turn it over to staff. <laughs> conflict. Oh, conflict. Commissioner have, Conley has no conflict. Okay, Commissioner Conley, I have no conflict. Commissioners and members of the public, we are here for a public hearing of file VA0036-21. It is a request for a lot size minimum administrative variance requesting to reduce the lot size by 20% in an AF10 zone. So the proposal is to lower the minimum lot size to eight acres where 10 acre is required by code. The requested deviation in lot size is a minimum of 20% reduction. Uh, it is not a request for a zone change or land division. This request has no impact on the zoning or land use designation of the property. Site is currently being used for residential and agricultural purposes. It is a total of approximately 40 acres of unplatted land. <laughs> indirect access from Fish Creek Road, which is a county owned and maintained public right of way. It has direct access by a 40, foot, uh, 40 feet wide uh, private easement, which is being used for ingress, egress, and utilities. The current land use designation is agriculture forest land, and the uh, zoning designation is agricultural forestry 10 district. Site shows presence of wetlands and intermittent streams. Soils are classified as non-prime farmland. Flood hazard zone is X. Flood plain review is not required. And no critical wildlife habitats were identified by any local, state, or federal agencies. It is currently being served by uh, an individual well, an individual septic system. It will have access to Selkirk Fire District, Avista Utilities, Lake Pondre School District 84, Pondre Hospital District, Bonner County Ambulance District. This request was notified to several public agencies, which are listed here on the screen. Idaho Department of Fish and Game replied saying they do not have any comments to submit for this application. Panhandle Health District would like to encourage the applicant to contact PSG prior to proceeding as the only way to know if sanitary services as proposed will be adequate for this project. Department of Environmental Quality has no impact, environmental impact comments at this stage. And Idaho Department of Lands replied with no comments. We did not receive any other comments from 
other public agencies that were notified. These were some of the concerns that were raised by the public, setting precedent, opposition to rezoning, personal need for variance, inadequate water supply for domestic use and fire suppression, emergency vehicle ingress egress, no power utility, negative increase in auto traffic on Fish Creek Road, destruction of forest and wildlife, lower property values in the area, and request inconsistent with the neighborhood. These are the Bonner County revised code standards against which this uh, file was reviewed. The purpose of this request is to grant relief from strict restriction, uh, strict application of the provisions of the title where proposal conforms to the standards of title 12 sub chapter 2.3 variances. So we will go over those standards now. There are three standard conditions against which a variance, is, uh, variance proposal is evaluated. The first condition is this, conditions apply to the property that do not generally apply to other properties in the same zone or vicinity, which conditions are a result of lot size, shape, topography, or other circumstances over which the applicant has no control. The topographical properties of this site do not generally apply to other properties in the vicinity as other properties may have different types of soils, they may have different type of slopes, uh, wetlands, access to the site. So the, the, these conditions that are listed over here are in particular applicable only to this site. The site is physically suitable to accommodate these eight acre lots based on these factors no presence of steep slopes, 100% of the site is covered in non-prime farmland soils. There are no critical wildlife habitat areas that have been identified by public agencies. Uh, the site has access from Fish Creek Road, which is a Bonner County owned and maintained uh, right of way, which is about 1.1 mile away from the, from the subject site. It has direct access via 40 feet wide private easement. The location is in a 500 year floodplain zone X, so it doesn't require any further floodplain review. It does not have limited access to public services such as Selkirk Fire District, Bonner County Ambulance District, Bonner Hospital District, and Bonner uh, School District 84. The second condition is uh, this special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant. The topographical conditions on the site are not a result of the applicant's actions. These parcels were bought in their current size, orientation, and topography in the in year 2017 as they exist today. Uh, again, the site is physically suitable to accommodate uh, eight acre lots, five of them, based on these conditions. The granting of this variance is not in conflict with the public interest in that it will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare, or materially injurious to properties or improvements in the vicinity of the subject parcel or law. So staff received comments from the public cons with concerns regarding zoning, increased residential density, increased traffic, et cetera. None of the comments stated evidence of how the granting of this variance was immediately detrimental to their to the public health, safety, or welfare, or would be materially injurious to properties or improvements in the vicinity of the subject parcel. We did not receive any comments from the public agencies um, with any concerns regarding public health or safety. With the recommended conditions of approval, the applicant would be limited to 15 dwelling units on the entire 40 acre unplatted parcel where 16 are currently permitted by right. Staff assesses no adverse impacts to the neighborhood as granting of this variance with recommended conditions of approval will result in a slight decrease in the total possible residential density by replacement of two RV dwelling units with single, one single family dwelling unit. The request will not change the current zoning or the current land use designation of the property, and thus the use, uses permitted on the property remain the same as permitted by the current code. So this is a graphic to show how the density may look like. So this is what, what is currently permitted. 
two RV dwelling units, one accessory dwelling unit, and one single family dwelling unit on four parcels, 10 acre parcels, which will result in a total density of 16 uh, dwelling units. And this is what it may look like if the request were to be granted today, which is one ADU, one RV dwelling unit, and one single family dwelling unit on five eight acre parcels, which will result in a total density of 15 uh, dwelling units. With that, staff recommends approval of the, of the request <coughs> subject to conditions of approval. We will go over the findings of facts and conclusions of law um, based on which the staff reached this recommendation. Property currently exists as two unplatted parcels of land totaling an area of 40 acres, each parcel being approximately 20 acres in size. Uh, the southern parcel is developed with a single family residence, while the northern parcel is currently undeveloped. The zone uh, of the property is AF10 and land use designation is agriculture forest land. The current zoning would allow a density of 16, uh, total 16 dwelling units on 40 acres of land. As per the current code, it has access to Fish Creek Road, which is a public uh, public right of way, and direct access through a forty feet wide private easement. The properties are accessed by a private. I've already discussed this. I apologize. Uh, so only one percent, approximately one percent of the site has slopes that are over thirty percent in grade. More, the rest of the site has either moderate slopes or no slopes at all. The entire site contains sagal silt loam soils, which are classified as non-prime farmland soils with a drainage classification of somewhat poorly drained. It is located in flood hazard zone X and would not require any further floodplain review. It does not have any flood base on it either. Um, it does not contain any critical wildlife habitats as identified, any, as identified by any agencies. Currently served by an individual well and septic system and has access to other services as well. So these are the conclusions of law that staff uh, came to after reviewing the file. Conditions apply to the property that do not generally apply to other properties in the same zone or vicinity and over which the applicant has no control. Special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant and the granting of this variance is not in conflict with the public interest. These are the conditions of approval if the uh, board were to approve this request today. This variance will not supersede any deed restrictions. The deed restrictions for each of the five parcels or lots that are to be created in the future, uh, they would have this uh, restriction on them, on them that they could only be developed with single family, one single family dwelling unit, one accessory dwelling unit, and one RV dwelling unit. The condition, condition A3 has been slightly modified to match condition A2. There was a typo in the staff report. So condition A3 reads like this, upon submittal of the short plat division application, or, or any other land division application for these properties, a plat note shall be added that restricts the density of each proposed parcel to one single family dwelling, one accessory dwelling unit, and one RV dwelling unit. Per proposed lot to ensure housing density does not exceed the comprehensive plan goals of AF10 zoning. And that concludes my presentation. I can take any questions at this time. Okay, thanks, Wayne. Mr. Conley, any questions for staff? I'll wait. Okay. How long would you like to wait? Well, no, I'll wait until we hear all, all the okay. different sides of this thing. So but I will we, have a couple questions for sure. Do you have a question, sir? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so this is an appeal. Should we go to the the applicant first. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the so the applicant first. Uh, applicant's representative or, or owner of the property. Are they here? Uh, I am the representative. Would you like to say a few words? Okay. 
Um, so for those who may not be uh, entirely familiar with me, I, my name is James Griffin. I am the third son of my parents, Roger and Avis Griffin, who are the property owners. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure really how deep in detail to go, but basically this appeal is just because um, honestly, they have us, five of us, five kids, and they'd like to leave some land um, split, some for each of us, which is common customary. I mean, if you go back in history. And so that is something that as currently um, restricted by the zoning laws and regulations um, is not permitted, but it's something that they want to do for their kids. And something that, um, as the staff report has concluded, is not deleterious to the neighborhood. Um, and so that's what, that's what they'd like to do. And as best can be done, that's really their goal. Um, I don't know if there are any other comments specifically needed from them. I do have an email from my mom who could not be here today, medically speaking. Um, so if this is appropriate, I'll go ahead and read yeah, that. Absolutely. So basically she wants, she does not want to change the zoning in terms of the, the, the circumstance. She wants a forest in good health. Um, she does not, you know, my parents, my dad's previous um, career has been dealing with mitigating or averting pollution, whether that's uh, water pollution, hazardous waste pollution, air pollution, so they're very much opposed to pollution. Um, and they want, again, a, um, a healthy growing, you know, uh, culture of the, the forest. And they're not trying to do this to alter that, to change that, to develop it. They're opposed to that. Um, again, they want, they'd like to uh, pass it down to the family, but in ways that it's easier to maintain. So for example, yeah, theoretically, we could uh, each proposed new parcel could have a prime dwelling unit on it. That's I can obviously can't say what's going to happen, but that's not likely to happen, given the fact that among the family, that's already been more or less dismissed. Some of us want to keep it as um, untouched, except for you know forest maintenance, for hunting or you know game things like that. Um, so there wouldn't be any development happening. Um, others, yeah, it might be nice to have a um, cabin in the woods or something like that, but that may or may not be necessary. It also may be a question of um, time, money that is not available. Um, and so the goal is to make it um, easier to manage, to split up it as, as wanted, but um, they love this land, they love the, the parcel, I mean, you know, where else can you open the window and find a moose staring in? So, um, and that actually happened to my mom. She looked out the kitchen window and there's a moose face to face with her. So, um, actually in this area, it's, quite it's pretty common, common. Yeah. It's pretty common. <laughs> but you know, from their background, that's hasn't yeah. been common here to four. And then they love that. They love the area. And so, um, you know, that's really, you know, they, they want to provide for their kids, us. Um, and that's, that's why they are requesting this okay so any questions for the applicant oh, okay. oh you're good thank okay. you okay mr quail sure um the three minute has caught me uh, off guard um, i'm gonna give you time i'm gonna give you time you. since you're since you're actually the one requesting the uh, yeah and brian doesn't do the well, it was just three minutes, I don't think. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> Brian, we all know you. In fact, I'm already, I'm already ordering dinner as we speak. No, I'm just kidding. No. So, Brian, it's to you. Yeah, I figured since you were the one challenging the variant, the variance that we would give you some time. Thank you. Well, I got three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. Well. <laughs> No, you have, you have whatever time you need. I have my wife here, so she'll be glad to donate. So watch our body language. If you see us getting bored, then yeah, no. <laughs> no. Just kidding. In all seriousness, thank you for the time. I, I appreciate it. I, I take this uh, opportunity very seriously, and I don't take an, an appeal lightly either. Okay. 
Well, good afternoon. For the record, I'm Brian Quayle. I'm here at the request of my brother and his family. My brother purchased the property directly north of the subject property back in 1973, and it's served by the same access easement as the subject property. We built the first road up the easement in 1974. The work was done using pickup trucks, chainsaws, and hand tools. We constructed logs, log box culverts for the two drainage crossings. We replaced those in the 90s with some metal ones, but point being, it was all hand work. In mud season, it gets bad enough that we would use a Pulaski along the entire length to knock down the sidewalls of the rut so we could maintain non-damaging drainage and drive our vehicles in and out. And you get to know the characteristics of a property quite well under those type of circumstances. So we're here today to request that the board reverse an administrative determination and to steer away from the dangerous precedent. Granting parcel size variances based upon personal financial desires and the number of family members is inappropriate and defies the legal justifications for zoning and land use regulations. It ignores the hours upon hours of effort that has gone into the zoning of this area over the years. And recently the county initiated the sub area zoning efforts and solicited input and established zoning recommendations. Area landowners took the time to become informed and some attended the meetings. Area landowners were generally satisfied with this area's proposal as it kept the subject area requiring 10 acre minimum parcel sizes. That proposal did not include a provision that an administrative decision would allow up to a 30% reduction. The Griffin property, <clears throat> excuse me, and its parcel sizes was the subject of a zone change application last fall requesting five acre zoning. The PNZ public hearing was well attended and no one in the neighborhood spoke in favor of the application. The PNZ commission recommended unanimously to uh, recommend a denial to the board. There was no other rural zone property anywhere near the subject lands. The few smaller parcels referenced in the application materials are not grouped together. They are grandfathered in and were created long before the current zoning. Many of them were created in the 60s and 70s before Bonner County and the state had land use laws. <clears throat> now case law has established a variant should not be of the landowner's making. It should be strongly associated with the physical limitations of the property or building site. The applicant's response in the application demonstrate that this request is of their own making. Their personal family desire to provide equal individual parcels to all their children does not constitute the legal rationale required for a variance. The staff determination states condition applying to the property do not generally uh, apply to other properties in the same zone or vicinity. Knowing that area quite well, I respectfully disagree. It's not correct, and there is no data that's been provided or evidence provided in the file to the contrary, only generalized statements. Surrounding properties are in fact very similar to the physical characteristics of a mix of slope and benches. Based on the applications and staff's rationale, then all properties will become eligible for family splits with parcel sizes determined by the number of eligible family members divided into the acreage owned and variances granted as needed. Both the applicant's application and the staff report state that the applicant's property rights will be negatively impacted if not allowed to split off into family members. However, by statute, there are no property rights associated with the variance. Bonner County Revised Code cites Idaho Code in referencing variance procedures and standards. And the Idaho Statute 67-65-16 states, quote, a variance shall not be considered a right or special privilege but may be granted to an applicant only upon showing of undue hardship because of the characteristics of the site and that the variance is not in conflict with the public interest. So what that sets up is that any property right defaults to the public and existing neighboring landowners who then can rely on the zoning and land use ordinances and the processes that the law intended. Lot size variances should be for small variations caused by circumstances such as a short section. You guys are familiar with that. It's a common occurrence within Bonner County and typically result with a parcel within a development being a few tenths to an acre shy of code compliance. Variances are also appropriate for grandfather parcels having new development. But short of a planned unit development with an associated common area, variances should not be used to create multiple substandard parcels within the same development. <clears throat> and whereas staff has noted that this isn't a request to subdivide, it's a request to 
get to the subdivision. So without this, they can't do the subdivision that's proposed. The county has a history of numerous substandard parcels being created for various reasons, including family exemptions. We all know many of those properties have had issues over the years that not only affect the individual landowner and their neighbors, but have added to the administrative burden that the county carries on in perpetuity. You guys have seen that come in front of you. Family split provisions within county ordinances are limited and were specifically written so as to require compliance with the zoning standards. These family split rights are not based on the number of family members one has. No actual undue hardship caused by the characteristics of the property is provided or demonstrated. In fact, only hardship identified affects a personal goal and is the result of their own actions of changing plans after buying the property and or purchasing too few of acres to divide among their family members. Additionally, it should be noted that many family splits don't result in long-term family ownership as Bonner County intended with family exemption. Experience shows us families have issues and plans change, resulting in the lots being sold outside the family. No guarantee is provided or offered that this property will continue to be used as stated in the application, let alone be held within the family. According to the staff report, Bonner County 12238C1 specifically states, the burden of proof is on the applicant. The applicant provided no information demonstrating required proof in the file in application submittals. However, given the information in the staff report, staff took the time to do an effort of a slope analysis on the property for them. There is no supporting data or specific references that have been supplied that staff used in making the slope analysis determination, but it appears inaccurate and couldn't have been uh, ground truth given the current snow cover. Those of us that know this area are aware there is a significant drainage of fairly steep sidewalls that runs north-south through the, the property. It receives considerable drainage from the north. The staff report and analysis makes no mention of the 14% grade within the access easement. As testified at the P&Z hearing, but not included within the staff report, the access to the property is steep. Based on inclinometer readings, the angled driveway approach to Fish Creek Road is approximately 10% not 2% as required by the county. This approach immediately leads to a 12%, um, excuse me, immediately leads to a 12% slope, which then increases to 14% due to a large outcrop of solid bedrock immediately below the road surface. Those of, those of us familiar with this access know that the luge it becomes in the winter and what it becomes during mud season. The easement characteristics limit the ability to serve existing properties, let alone increasing the number of properties. Years ago, Commissioner Bradshaw had personal experience with this access and its limitations. Mr. Bradshaw and his wife hosted the neighborhood get together at their place specifically so guests would not have to drive this access to get to the neighborhood event. The get together was held at their home specifically due to the access. Larger parcel zoning associated with the access and building slopes is part of Bonner County's zoning rationale. This rationale isn't limited to the boundaries of the subject property, but also the access. Putting small lots on top of a steep mountain because the top is flat does not make rational sense if the access doesn't support that level of improvement. First Creek alone has its challenges, including a 12% slope at the angled intersection with Ikes Road just below this property. Applicable codes, accurate information in the existing, I hope I'm not losing you, Commissioner McDonald. No, no, I'm taking notes. Okay. Applicable codes, accurate information in the existing planning and zoning commission, public testimony, deliberations, and record decision were not thoroughly considered. They appear to have been dismissed. Staff rationalizes the determination by stating if the subject properties were all developed to maximum density, it would result in additional impact. The additional impact identified is from a second RV living unit being located on each parcel while ignoring the impacts of an additional single family residence. Not only is this an unlikely density scenario, but a decision making process that makes a, a determination based upon what a, a theoretical absolute maximum use density could be while ignoring the impact differences between those uses is flawed. Of note here is this information that is contained in this part of the staff report for this rationale actually demonstrates that the applicants can reach their goal of remaining forested, having the whole family being able to be located on and have the enjoyment of the subject properties 
without a variance and remain compliant with the ordinance standards. <clears throat> From our perspective, it appears that Griffins have, have had staff advocating their request from the zone change application right through the administrative variance. With limited zone change application information, they received a supported staff report, followed by a one week variance application review and the timely decisions approving the request. This was done utilizing incomplete application information and inappropriate rationale to justify that approval. Honor County Revised Code states specifically that the burden of proof is to justify the request lies with the applicant not the appellants, and not staff. The conclusions staff made are not based on application information, but rather information and incorrect parcel analysis compiled by staff. Where is at least the least equal staff effort and advocacy for the neighboring landowners? Where is it for those that took time to provide the testimony at the PNZ hearing to oppose this the zone change request, as well as for those that participated in the sub-area zoning? There's none. There's a two inch section in a 12 page report that lists the public comments. Staff goes on to say on page seven of the report that the lack of evidence, quote, and unquote, provided by the opponents at the PNC evening. I respectfully disagree with that. There was evidence that I brought was provided within the testimony, certainly at least at the level that was provided on the other from the other position. The burden to provide evidence according to the code now lies with the applicants and no one else, but yet the applicants provided no such evidence and staff made the determination that they did. We believe it's time to control some of this nonsense that is occurring and keep portions of the county the way that landowners were told it would be kept. The Griffins in their testimony to the PNZ Commission stated that they have fallen in love with the area and want to keep their land forested just the way it is now. That's great, falls in line with the general community and our comprehensive plan goals. However, like many others, once in our paradise, they want to change the very rules and standards that we have lived by that have retained the paradise that we have. Once changed, it doesn't return. These proposed eight acre parcels will be used by future landowners and buyers of lands in the area to rationalize a zone change to rural. They'll say, quote, <laughs> After all, the county in 2022 approved substandard lots right in the middle of an ag forest zone. The Griffins can keep their land forested and using existing zoning standards can have their children all living on the property. The staff report specifically details the number of living units allowed. Joint ownership can provide the equal ownership goal stated within the application. Joint ownership is a very common occurrence. This will accommodate the Griffin family without having to have this special consideration that has disrupted the entire neighborhood. But please don't get me wrong. I think it's fine that the Griffins and staff develop a working relationship. I encourage that type of thing. And based upon their P and Z presentation, I'm sure the Griffins were present to work with. However, with the recent code changes that we've made in the county, staff has become the decision makers on items like this which can be a challenging responsibility when also having to administer ordinances fairly and equally. We believe staff erred when they became the Griffin's advocates at the expense of other landowners. There has been no outreach to us from the Griffin's or staff, only notices. Some of the neighborhood residents discussed their frustration with me of testifying at the PNZ hearing only to have an administrative decision nullify their time and efforts as well as a planning commission's decision. Therefore, there was no point in attending today's meeting. Their input didn't matter. I tried to address that, but how sad that I had to. I'm almost done, Dan. Thank God. <laughs> the board knows of my experience, but I got that put a lot of stuff on the record. I have you to did. address it. Well, your facts, yeah. The board knows of my experience and what I do professionally. You know, I am well aware of the gross pressures and the challenges Bonner County and our communities are experiencing. I've worked on many projects over the last 30 years. However, the county's never seen me bring this type of proposal forward, and I wouldn't. It is an inappropriate use of the ordinance provisions. Yes, I have a personal connection with the, an affected property, and I am passionate about this area of the county. But this application, the way the determination was made, is upside down from where we should be. 
The board has complete control over this decision. You are not penned in by some ordinance provision limiting your discretion. And Dan, I just need a couple of minutes to put your points within the staff report in order to get you guys to the decision that we would like you to see you make. I have to address a couple things within the staff report. Um, page four within the services, as noted, power Northern Lights is the power company out there, I believe. But however, uh, based upon my conversations with area landowners, there is no uh, utility easement to this property. So I might be corrected on that, but uh, to my knowledge, there is no easement known um, and has been that type of utility easement has been refused by the neighbors. <clears throat> See, I'm skipping over some of the notes, Dan. That's okay. No, take your time. Thank you. It's only like two, two, two or four. Okay, thanks. Um, <clears throat> on page six of the staff report, uh, staff gets into um, the request is to approve. There's uh, a condition that results in uh, how how many dwelling units they have, and it results in, in lessening of one. My thing is, is that, okay, now we're putting these type of restrictions on property, so now we're picking that burden up as a public to, to be managing these things. And the, the following paragraph says, it results in the overall replacement of two RV dwelling units with one single family residence and will not result in an increase of any additional residential density on the site that is already permitted for. Well, okay, but what recognized traffic and land use data was used to be able to say that these single family residences and RV uses are equal? I, I, did, I have been provided none of that. Um, The, uh, I'll go on to say that, again, uh, the burden of proof on all of these uh, following uh, sections within the staff report, citing the, the Idaho Code or the Barnard County Revised Code, they have the applicant's information, and then they go on with staff's information. If you look at what the applicant provided, it can't lead to what was below it. There is no supportive information supplied by the applicant in, this, in these sections. Um, the applicant states that there will be no increase in noise, light, glare, odor, fumes, or vibration. And what they indicate is, is that they're going to keep the property in forestry. If you're going to keep it in forestry and have all of this, then you don't need all the subdivided lots and the variance for those smaller lots. Page seven. Again, I, I don't feel comfortable, real comfortable with this, commissioners, because it's, it's, it's put staff into a weird position with this stuff. I'm not, I'm not attacking staff, but this is, well, this is, yeah, I know. This is, the thing is, it kind of sounds like you're attacking staff. But go ahead. I know, it, it, and that's why I'm saying what I am. But staff made the determination. The PNZ did, you guys did, we're not directing it. it Staff made something, they came up with a determination, they came up with a document that made a decision, and they listed their findings and, and conclusions within it, and we believe they're flawed. So I have to be able to address this stuff, and I have to try to hold them accountable for the same thing that's that holding others accountable for. It. Thank you. Now, the staff report states that none of the comments at the public hearing within the planning, at the planning commission level stated any evidence. Well, okay, let's stick with that. Where's the evidence that the applicants provided? For them? The staff report itemizes that they did not provide that. So if, if the opponents at the PNC were dismissed categorically because no evidence was provided, but an applicant can come in and ask for a fair answer this and provide no information and they get supported by it, then this, like I said, we're upside down on this. Burden of proof lies upon the applicant to show whether the characteristics of the site conform to the sections of the subchapter. They have a short paragraph with, within their application. Then staff goes on to say the application for this request was submitted in conformance with the section. That's not true. The applicants did not supply any of the evaluating information that would lead to staff's conclusions. 
and the variance should have been denied at that point. Lastly, the findings of fact on page 11. having this decision first, I have to go through a couple of these. Number three, actually the wording in that, um, this finding proves that the family can be, can achieve all of their goals and not need this variance. But number three can still be a finding, but then it would not. And number four, <clears throat> I think they, uh, the, the site is accessed by Fish Street Road, a county owned and maintained public right of way. Be a 40 foot wide private easement, I would suggest adding with a grade of up to 14%. Number four continues on with Fish Creek Road, is approximately a tenth of a mile away from the site and has a speed limit of 35 miles an hour and is treated with gravel. I suggest adding and has grades of up to 12%. Number five. Keep the same wording as it does, but then add this access encroaches to Fish Creek Road at a 10% when the county standards are 2%. The slope increases to 14, then increases to 14%. Number six. I don't think it should be left in there because I think it's in here. There is no supporting data for, for references by the applicant or staff to create this level of numbers such as 18.6. If a quad map was used for this, quad maps are certainly not uh, the level of accuracy to come up with this type of a site analysis. And then of course, number 11 um, mentioned the site has access to services such as da 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 da. Um, they don't have access to services. Therefore, under the conclusions, we would suggest that the, under conclusion one, that the property, the, Conditions of property do not, excuse me, do apply generally to the other properties in the same zone of vicinity. It's the same slope and bench topography as the surrounding area. Conclusion number two: special conditions and circumstances do result from the actions of the applicant. The applicants created the circumstance with their personal choices and state so much as so within their application. Number three. Granting of the variance is in conflict with the public interest, and it will be detrimental to the public health, safety, and welfare, and material or be material injurious to properties or improvements in the vicinity of the subject property. The access doesn't comply with county approach standards. It's unsafe. Therefore. Oh, really? There's a therefore? <laughs> There's a therefore? Oh. No. Did you wake up, Dan? Therefore. Area landowners believe the staff has erred in reaching this determination and request the board correct this error by reversing the staff's decision and not grant the variance. Thank you, and thank you for honoring the time request. Okay. No problem. Thanks, Brian. Okay, let's go ahead and move into public comment. Um, I'll take anyone that wishes to speak in favor of the appeal, which would be opposed to the project. <laughs> this is going to be in reverse. I'm sorry, what was that again? <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know I had to think about it. So this since this is an appeal, those in favor of the appeal, which would mean you're opposed to the variance. The variance. Yeah. And if you're opposed to the Let's appeal, you're in favor of the variance. I would say just for clarification, like the statute says that on uh, by the way, this is Bill Wilson for the record. The statute says that you guys get to hear this um, as though it's a, a de, novo, de novo. Right. So let's just keep it let, for, for clarity's sake. Um, if you, uh, so we'll pretend that we're pretend actually hearing this you're as an hearing application. It, hearing it with fresh eyes, that's what. Or, with okay, so then, we'll, then, so then we'll reverse um, everything I just previously said, um, <laughs> and we'll go with those in favor of the variance. Um, is there anyone here in favor of the variance? There, that's a better way to put it. You've already, you've already spoken. I, you all have a chance to rebut, by the way. Um, okay, those opposed would be the. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is this is you are for the variance for us granting the variance. Correct. Not a, yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so my name is Anastasia Griffin. I am uh, the only daughter of of Roger and uh, Avis Marie Griffin. Um, and I just wanted to say, um, it, my parents 
obviously were not able to come. Um, I myself uh, moved to uh, their house back in the fall of 2020 uh, when my dad had his first stroke. So um, that's when I first lived there. Um, and I started um, acting as a caretaker for actually both of my parents since my mother has had uh, ongo ongoing uh, reoccurring um, uh, health issues uh, throughout that time. Um, and my dad had a, um, <clears throat> pardon me, he had a severe stroke in on December 15th. Um, and he spent two months in the hospital. And so obviously he still requires 24 seven care and not able to make it. Um, and my mother is also um, has severe health problems. And so that's why my brother and I are here. Um, just a little background on myself. I'm not gonna make it in three minutes. Just a little background on myself. Um, I moved here in January of 20, 2015 uh, when I got out of the army. I've lived all over the country, all over the world. Um, I love it here in North Idaho. Uh, when my parents first purchased the property, um, I was actually living in, in uh, Post Falls. And, um, but when they did purchase the property, I was very interested in helping them with it. Um, I, I did um, what I could to, as far as thinning out some of the, um, the, uh, the, the ladder fuel and, and working with them. They, they did, um, I encouraged them and helped them to reach out to NRCS for um, various uh, projects to, in order for, for the soil health and, and the forest health. Um, and I was involved as much as I could. You know, I, I do have a full-time job, but that was, uh, my aim was to help them. And um, it's only gotten more complicated as their health declined. Um, and I did move up there. Um, but what I wanted to say was um, one of the reasons why um, they requested the ease, the variance and, and, and it's not, and, and they were probably not able to come up with some of the things because of their health. Um, and, and they've done it all themselves, um, even through these health issues. Uh, one of the reasons why this uh, variance was, was discussed is in order to make it easier for the family to help as far as taking care of the forest. You know, 40 acres is impossible for, for two people in their like their mid seventies. So that's why the family has, has come together to, to, in order to help that. Um, I, I have done what I could to not only to help my parents through their health challenges, but also to do what I could for the land because I do love it. Um, but I also want to say um, to you all and, and to, and to our neighbors, um, I, um, I thank you for your involvement and for your care for this county. Um, I too have been, become concerned about the, the, the development that has happened, um, especially south of here. I do recognize that it's happening. Um, I do wanna say truthfully to everyone that there is no development planned. I know that, you know, maybe you don't believe me. Um, wrap it up, okay. Um, so just really quickly, um, I just want to say that um, everything that 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 I've done um, has been from a, a standpoint of of stewardship of the land and a desire to to help my parents' legacy and and to care for the land. Um, but it also stems from my uh, identity um, as a Christian, and I want to say to everyone that no matter what happens here today, um, I I'm okay with it, and and I have peace with it because. Um, of of my realization that um, this is you know th this is just one thing and it is um, you know there's there's a lot more to life and there's and I I'm coming from it from more of a turn, an eternal perspective because I realize that this world is is actually not my home and and um, and as a Christian I I do believe that there is something better and I can have peace about. Um, you know what happens. I could I could get into a car accident tomorrow and die, um, and that that would be okay because I know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. And He's given me peace about this. And so I just want to thank everyone for being here and for your concern and your love and care for this for this state and this county. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in favor of granting the variance? Anyone neutral? We actually had a guy yesterday in the hearing say he was neutral, and he clearly was not neutral. <laughs> there's no one I've ever not found even that, close. Yeah, there's no one I found that has been neutral. I don't even know why we have it. In there. 
Okay, those opposed. How many people are opposed? Raise your hand. Okay, what we'll do is we'll start over here and we'll just work our way around if you guys don't mind. Instead of going off the list, it's easier to do it that way. Try not to Make repeat sure you... everything Brian said. No, <laughs> I was just going to say thank you for what he said because I don't have to worry about saying any of that complicated okay. stuff. So for everybody, you got to make sure you state your name for the record. Yes, I am Bobby Bamer, and um, I own property adjacent to the Griffins property. Uh, we purchased our property in 2014. Um, the Griffins purchased their property in 2017. So when we purchased our property, um, we have three children. So I understand wanting to take care of your children. I get that. We looked long and hard looking for property that we could do what the Griffins are wanting to do with their children. We bought a property that has four parcels on it. So each of our kids have a parcel. I'm also taking care of my mother-in-law. She lives with me currently. So if you don't see a little gray hair coming on. Um, but um, what I was just saying is the, the Griffins bought the property knowing that they have five children. They bought the property knowing that there were four parcels. They bought this property it's not, they're not a family who have lived here 50, 60, two generations. This is, they bought this property and then came on it, then wanting to make that change. If they knew that they wanted to do a property and give, give equally to their children, then they should have bought something that was already zoned for that to expect the rest of us to accept these variances. And it is a very slippery slope because just like Ms. Griffin said, it is, this is a beautiful area and we have more and more people moving here. The more people that move here, they're gonna have families that move here with them and they're gonna want the same variance. And if you guys allow this variance to happen and the county makes this, then it will set that precedence for further requests for variance on properties. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Go ahead, Mrs. Quayle. Make sure to identify your name for the right. You gotta go up there. Yeah, you gotta have the microphones. We have, we have to be able to pick it up on the recording. I speak very loudly, but Christine Quayle is my name. And um, I just wanted to, at the beginning, defer my three minutes to Brian Quayle. So Good Lord. I yeah, do. <laughs> I'm going to repeat everything he said in three minutes. Uh, no, I, um, I am the sister-in-law of George Quayle, who owns the property there, and um, agree with all of what's been said by the opposition. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Christine. Uh, you, sir, glasses. Good day. Thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is Scott Clasing, along with Giselle Knowles, who couldn't make it today because she's working. Um, we own the property immediately below the property that's being discussed. Um, that is also the property that has that 10 to 14% grade access road going up. It may be a 40 foot wide easement, but that road accommodates one vehicle one way and it does not handle vehicles going up and down at the same time so all of this has an impact going from four to five lots we got one additional well the bulk of us in this area are strained with less than four and a half gallons per minute water and so we cringe at the thought of losing losing those accesses the previous rezoning requests discussed ample numbers of wildlife of concern in that area. Maybe it's not classified as critical habitat, but we've got bear, mountain lion, bobcat, elk, moose, whitetail, coyote. I could go on and on. I've got game pictures to back it. Um, you know, that, so the net of it is, is overall, I, I'm against the, the, the variance being accepted. And to, to further the comment made earlier about the process being upside down, if we go back to the previous rezoning requests that approved in the preliminary steps to accept that rezoning, and later they rejected it after we brought all the information to the table. Um, I, I'm, I'm lo losing my approach here, but, yeah. but, but the point is, is even then it was, oh, I know what the point is, is, is the, the, there's a zoning law in effect. And yet the planning staff overrode the zoning law. I don't understand that process. To me, that's upside down. What they should have done is the initial recommendation should have followed the zoning law that's in existence. And yet the initial recommendation was not that. So with that said, I'm, I'm requesting that the variance be denied. Thank you for your time. And, and like earlier comments made, we want good neighbors, everybody, especially during this time. 
There's never been a more critical time of need. So we all need to find a way to get along and, and do it in a good, proper manner. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Scott. You start with the mask. Gentlemen, my name is Jay Omanson, and uh, I'm a neighbor. I live 330 feet from the property, so I didn't get the mailings, but that's okay. Um, I thoroughly agree with Brian. My, my contention is the fact that everything over and over again in here, it's by no fault of the owner, by no impact of the owner. It is entirely. That's why we are here is because trying to satisfy the desires of the owner. And as Brian said, the, the staff had clearly pointed out that all of these people can live on that 40 acres with no problem whatsoever. What is the, I see it as a big issue to divide it into five pieces, especially as it was designed. We have from the uh, original request, uh, a uh, drawing that makes no sense at all. Five, one piece in the middle and the other four around it. Due to the topography, I'm familiar with the area. Uh, this isn't going to work out very well. <clears throat> um, it said the uh, there there's no detriment to the public. Um, in there, they do the Panhandle Health Department in, in, sent a letter including concerns about septic planning. Uh, before dividing the properties. Uh, the staff did not address that one bit. Septic can be an issue around there. Some of the drainage is marginal. Again, the road, everybody, and it said uh, when <laughs> nobody said much in opposition um, or could prove any, provided any proof about safety issues. Um, it's hard to provide proof about future safety issues. Yes, with the, you know, the small family that's living there now, not a problem. Divide it up five times, sell it off. Now, each of those five new owners are going to do something else. They're each going to probably want to have a well. They're each going to want to have a septic tank. They're all going to be trying to drive up and down that road. And quite honestly, I have dodged, I'll bet, a half a dozen vehicles sliding off of that driveway onto Fish Creek Road. And the rest, from a safety standpoint, the rest of Fish Creek Road is a big issue. I don't know how much time you guys spend driving it, but... Uh, Been up there a few times. New people, yeah, new people tend to uh, drive in the middle, especially in the wintertime. They... Uh, Tends to be happening everywhere. I was going to say, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty common. Yeah, yeah. That's and I, I personally, in my 45, 44 years of living up there, I bet I have pulled out three dozen people from the ditch and seen wreckers pull another dozen. I'm going to thank you very much. Okay. I just want to uh, state my opposition. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Jay. It's a safety issue. Sure. Did you wish to speak? By the way, there's no, you don't have to be, feel like you're compelled to speak, but if you wish to speak, <laughs> it's not like you're forced to test, testify. My name is Lynn Settle. Uh, I live and own property at the end of Fish Creek Road. So I'm not on that map, but seven tenths of a mile from the property in question. Uh, <clears throat> I want to agree with everything that Brian Quayle said. He did a very good presentation there, and I think he covered a ton of points that really fast, and I hope they were all adequately digested but it was really good. Um, my biggest concern is that, you know, as much as I understand their family plight and their health issues with the parents and all that stuff, and I feel bad for them of all that, but the bottom line is that kind of story really shouldn't come into play as we're regarding variances. We understand variances are based on topography, land, things with the land you can't handle, you know, deal with cliffs, easements, whatever. And uh, to just do it based on how many kids you have to chop it up. I mean, that's going to happen all over the place. You know, pretty soon people will say, well, I have eight grandchildren. I'm going to chop it up into eight pieces over here. And that just doesn't seem like it's should be accepted or, or, or considered. 
And then the other thing is the comprehensive plan states very clearly that there's a concern about small acreage pr private properties being intrusion, intrusion into state and public lands. And uh, <clears throat> there are several uh, government land properties around that. To the Northeast, there's a big 160 National Forest. To the West, there's a whole bunch of state and government land. And to the South, Huckleberry Mountain, there's got a whole bunch of government land, US uh, BLM land, that sort of thing. So the bottom line there is also the concern is we're not supposed to be chopping up lands near all this public land because you wanna have larger acreages intermixed with the public land. So I think that needs to be taken into account as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Anyone else? You know, okay, we'll go ahead and go into rebuttal. So um, there, I think, have been a lot of uh, good points brought up. Um, certainly, I was not <laughs> prepared to uh, try to deal with all contingencies or um, uh, opposition um, to that. Uh, personally, and since I am as well living up there right now and trying to caretake for my parents who can't be there, um, I'm, I'd like to do my best to be a good neighbor. Um, uh, just, just, um, a couple things, um, that was brought up that, um, that we the, that my parents did not provide any guarantee or evidence that they would not um, further subdivide or sell off individual parcels. My only response to that is, how can they? Because no one can know the future. Um, and but the thing is, say this variance is rejected, what's to stop them from doing that anyways? So that's kind of a seems irrelevant thing to bring up. It may not be, but um, that that would be my response to that. Um, for the safety, I mean, in terms of the road access, yeah, um, I'm the one who had to try to sand down the uh, access, the easement road to Fish Creek, and it took uh, multiple hours of um, effort. I, I, I drive up and down there going to work Monday through Friday and then sometimes on weekends, so I agree that's something that i would love if it was a better grade um that's not in my control i don't see how that can be a controlled factor that's just a fact of that's what it's like up there um so i don't really understand you know that this variance should not be granted based simply on that um and i there was something else i i can't remember right now so um that's all i have right now okay a lot of it was pointed at staff so yeah it could probably be answered by them hopefully so staff yeah. sorry i don't know why i'm looking at you okay i would like to point out a couple of things um particularly in general provisions of variances it says a variance is a modification of the bulk or placement requirements of this title as to lot or parcel size so this request is not overriding the zoning code or the bonnet county revised code it is this request is in compliance with with the code um also each variance is assessed individually we do not go back to look at previous variances that have been granted so that it sets a precedence for future variances. So there's no precedence. Each file is new. Nice Each file is looked at a, in, a, in a fresh uh, way. Then I would like to address steep slope to the to the access steep, steep access to the site. We have a lot of provisions in our code that access steep slopes, uh, particularly storm water management and geotechnical analysis where it is required. And it is required for any kind of development, whether it is development of a road or putting in a building or any other development per se. This is not a request for a zone change. The previous request was, was for a zone change and that was what the file was heard for the first time. This, in this particular request, the applicant is not requesting to change the zone, not requesting to change the use of the property or the land use designation. It stays within the same designation the request is to change the parcel size which is permitted by this 
which is which can be requested as per this part of the code sub chapter 2.3 variances. Um, as per according to the comments about wildlife, we noticed it to Idaho Department of Fish and Game and they particularly replied. The Idaho Department of Fish and Game does not have any comments to submit for this application. If the agency does, does reply in such a manner, there is no way for us to push forward and ask them to, to give us a comment saying that there is wildlife or there is critical wildlife habitat on the property. Um, that is all I have. Will you also cover the, the septic issue because I think there's a misunderstanding about when septic comes into play. And we see this a lot during any kind of planning hearing. People think that, you know, at this phase is when you look at septic, that's not true. It's, it's when they have, when they pull a BLP, but if you would cover that. Yes. So um, as of now, we, we, we are implementing this in our code recently that any BLPs that will be issued, they have to go through a Panhandle Health District review before the final inspection of the BLP. So anytime the properties were to be developed with the number of residences that they are permitted, they would have to go through the septic. And BLP is building location permit. With a short flat process yeah. as well. Yes, it's, it's a requirement. The agencies are notified. Again, they have to go through the whole process. To get and as, far as, as far as slope analysis, um, can you cover the slope analysis issue Brian brought up? Yes, so um, I will go to the environmental, environmental standards of the code, which talk about steep slopes. So our code, this part of the code requires the geotechnical analysis um, that is required for all proposed building sites, roads, driveways, or other developments where any of the following conditions may apply. Soils are highly erodible or where this uh, slopes exceed 30%. So this is all covered in the code. Anytime they come to us wanting to put a road or a driveway in or wanting to build a, build a residence in that area, they will have to go through this analysis. So there's right, but how did you arrive at the gradient? Okay, so about- um, As far as as far as far analyzing the slope on the property, okay. how did you come to Okay, so our, our information about the slopes comes from United States Geological Survey. We, the percentages for those are as close as we can get. And that is why I have constantly repeated in the staff report, it's an approximate number. It is not a definite 81.6 or 15.3, whatever it is. It's is an approximate code? number. It's is as really close in, as we can get. Is there anything in code that requires staff to go out to the site and, and uh, delineate the actual slope on any given property for a, for a no. request like this for a variant? No, there isn't. Okay. We, we, it's typical for staff to review against the tools that we have access right. to. And so it, it was a thorough review of the application. Okay. So in going back to the slope in the driveway, because that came into question, if they should decide to develop, then that's when the geotechnical analysis will have to be done. They will definitely have to submit a stormwater review, right. definitely. But not during, the, not during this variance phase or even a zone change phase or any of that, that happens at the time. At the time of the developed. development, yes. Yeah. Okay. But the substandard road, we're falling in below the 10, 10 allows substandard road, but the five does not, is that correct? Yes. So how how do you propose that we're under the 10 and- Over the five. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> how do you propose to get around the fact that this road is obviously substandard, that oh. everybody has testified to the correct. fact? Correct, and so the, the road would be addressed through the short five process. This, Grading five lots still triggers the short plan, which means the road standards are going to have to be. Removed. So, so it would have to be. Have to build some, they'll have to be built some sort of road uh, through the property. If they develop. The access. Yeah, we just have to review it all. But it's not. We just have to review it all. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Do you want to go ahead and do you want some time, Milton? So again, I you might want to get to a mic yourself. Yeah, I, I assisted uh, with an appeal uh, some time ago, and uh, it it made me realize how easy 
it is to pick apart a staff report. Um, there's, you're always going to find flaws. You're always going to find mistakes. You're always going to find shortcomings or whatever. Um, there, there are, it's easy to do because we all have different perspectives based on, uh, on, on how we look at files and, and how we look at codes. And um, that's why we have the board here to, to figure out, you, you know, the, what the standards are and what well, the- Well, thank you for that. Yeah, that's, that's why you're-, you're Way to pass it up. Thanks, Make man. these hard decisions, right? If we, if we base this on precedence, then this is a no brainer because these are granted several times a year for the last many years, right? Um, lot size minimums come before the board on often. Uh, last, just last month, the Planning and Zoning Commission approved a 0.91 acre parcel in an R10 zone. So they do occur um, for whatever reason. The, the point is, is that the board needs to consider, you, you know, what those standards are. Um, and, and, it, and it may be worth continuing and looking, asking the applicant for some, some more information if you're not satisfied, or if you're satisfied with the results to, to make a decision either way. Um, but uh, to accuse the staff of being an advocate for the applicant, is unfair and wrong. We review the application against the standards in the code with the tools that we have available to us, okay? If we were to require every, do we need to put in the code that every applicant needs to go out and hire a private planner and a private surveyor to turn in an application to work on their property? I, I, think, that's a, I, th I think that's government overreach and we need to be careful with that. And, and so the applicant turns in the best that they have. Um, we ask for more, um, but nevertheless, we review against the tools that we have. We, that we're not advocating for an applicant here. We're reviewing the application against the standards of the code. Um, uh, again, the, it's, it's here for you, the board, to determine if, if uh, this, you feel that the standards have been met or not, um, and we'll support your decision. Well, would you make sure we have the, I don't know if they have in front of them, but at least have the standards for those criteria for the approval or, or denial of the variance up on the screen so we can have those readily available while the board deliberates? Yep. And you think I can- You're gonna have to <laughs> zoom yeah. that in, man. You don't have a touch screen here. Why don't you read it? Well, yeah. I guess we can look up here. Yeah, conditions apply to the property that do not uh, generally apply to other properties in the same zone or vicinity, which conditions are a result of lot size, shape, topography, or other circumstances over which the applicant has no control. Um, That's a tough one for me. It, 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 it's... Yep. There's no, no more public comment. Yeah, there's no more public comment. Sorry. So that was my fault. Um, if if the board is approving the site plan that was presented, I understand. Okay. If you look at the topography, okay, and and again, uh, that's why you may want to ask for more information. But if you, because there is a stream cutting through the property. Right. <clears throat> but the property is, two, uh, Bill Wilson, for the record, the property, the two parcels together are just a square. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Okay, so the, the, the lot, the size, or the, the shape itself doesn't lend itself to any particular, it's not some weird shape parcel that would have unique characteristics for that purpose. No, other than the, other than the uh, stream. So it would, if anything, it would be the topography. Yeah, the topography would affect the, the, parcel, the actual parcels. But the problem is, is they <laughs> laid them out yep. so funny that it, it didn't take a, if there probably is some impediments on that piece of property, you know, I mean, the, the stream, the steeper slopes, but that's not the way they laid it out. Wait, hold on. So we, should we go into deliberation? Okay. Here? Well, why don't we? Are we? Are you done, Rebecca? Yep. Okay. So we'll go ahead. We are going to go ahead and move into deliberation. Okay. Sorry, guys. Just trying to go ahead. Thanks, Bill. On the right path there. You know, once you get past two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah.
<laughs> we got to be rain back. Yeah, so, we guys, do. so guys, again, I, as is my, my typical practice, when we begin deliberations, I had asked just to give you guys um, a bit of guidance on how we deliberate or what you should consider. I asked Milton to have those criteria up on the screen so that we are all on the same page and we're making discussions about those things and not deviating into stuff that may not be relevant. Um, I think, I think Jeff, you were getting ready to discuss that first condition um, regarding um, particular part, parts of the, of the file that have no, that are, that are unusual and that are not uh, circumstances over which the applicant has no control. So if you want to start there. So yeah, I'll just, I can start there, but I'll probably back up just a little bit further. Um, one of the things that I see in this is like, I don't think this is a proper use for this part of the code. Um, th this is this is making another parcel. Um, if they came in and said, hey, we've got the steep slope, got a creek at the bottom, we want to make that one 12 and this one six or whatever and still come up with the same, I'm like, I'd be all for that. I, and and I and I do feel for the family and and I and I understand that you know hey we'd love to have everybody get their equal portion of this piece of property that's very special to them but we say it time and time again we got to follow the law that's what our job is is the law is sits in front of me this does not fit and and again if, if the topography would have been utilized in, in some of these parcels, I still don't know that I'd go for it because it's creating an extra parcel. I mean, if you're just trying to make it make more sense so that the, you know, so you can get to it or you can have a better building site, I'd go along with all of those things. But I think this is a total misuse of this. Uh, I mean, to me, it's almost a skirt of the, MLD? Yeah, no, of the oh. uh, uh, of the sub, uh, so right the, out of topic. the rezone R five rezone. Okay. It could. It doesn't have to. It could. Is there something in code that precludes the variance from creating another uh, parcel? As far as like. You mean? No, those are the steps. Yeah. I mean, is it, okay. And, and it is true. So we can't. So you can create. I'm just trying to you, see because it, I have the same is. concern you had. I'm thinking. First, I look at this. I'm going. Well, this is an MLD plus. MLD plus one. Well, it is. Well, then. Right. Well, I, I know. But we're. There's. I, I have a process here. So. Yeah. He's talking your, to himself. To answer <laughs> your question, Dan. Um, Milton and I both. Uh, you know, we, we went over that portion. Of it. Uh, a variance. It does state that a variance can't can be used for lot size minimums under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, now, whether or not it applies here, again, that's why you have to apply these criteria. And I think what Jeff just spoke to was probably like very, very accurate that in the case of an unusual lot shape or unusual topography, then those are the things that are, are mentioned there. And those are truly outside mm -hmm. the scope of, or outside the ability of the applicant to control. Um, now, whether or not they can Use that as a as a justification for additional lots is a different question, but it can be used for for smaller lots in appropriate circumstances. Just you know, so we're clear. Yeah, that's that's clear. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of this, I want to I want to make a couple of statements here. Um, as we've already said before, you know, a lot of this stuff, and we see this a lot in in planning hearings for some reason that. A lot of the concerns here are concerns that would happen next if they decided to develop it. They, develop, they still have to pull a building location permit that kicks in all kinds of other standards that have to be met, um, including the road. By the way, my driveways, I go up over two pieces of 30% grade on my driveway. So it's not, you know, it's not a tragedy to go over 14. Um, as far as the staff goes, uh, when I started back in 2017, one of the things that planning had a uh, somewhat rocky reputation for being the department of no. People would come in and, and, and come into the planning department looking for help and they would say, well, you have a problem. Um, we won't tell you what the problem is, but when you figure it out, come back and we'll, and we'll go ahead and issue the permit once you fixed it. Um, we changed the paradigm and I said, listen, even though we're government, we should stop acting like government. We're supposed to be here to help the people of the county, which includes the landowners that are coming in and, and putting in an application. So instead of being the department of no, be the department that actually finds solutions for folks. Um, this board is, are, we're big advocates of private property rights. So 
So it's your property, as long as you can figure out a way to wedge it into the law, we're going to support it. And that doesn't go just for these folks. It goes for all of you in this room. If you ever come to us and trust me, someday you may, and we've seen this in hearings before, we'll have someone who just came to us a year before and requested something that they're now opposing for their neighbor. And that disturbs me because it's not very neighborly um, and I'm not a big fan of it. But what it appears to me that planning has done here is they've done just as we've tasked them to try to help a, a landowner provide a solution as government should, but rarely ever does. So in defense of a planning staff, um, Brian, I got to adamantly disagree with you and I really take exception to you coming after staff. They're doing the job that they've been tasked to do. Let's see if we can come up with some kind of creative solution and not just, you know, hunt and uh, force the landowner to try to figure it out. Um, even outside of the fact that the donors themselves have some health issues and that, um, that to me, that creates an even bigger uh, need for, for help. Um, I think my opinion on this is I'm concerned about the way the layout is for the parcels. Uh, well, no, I you can't respond. You just gotta let me rattle on. This is unlike my wife and I, where when I speak, she interrupts me and you know, it's a different deal. Um, so, um, because I do think that one could make an argument for the extra parcel, if you can figure out how to make it work with the, with the issues that uh, are topographical, which are, are outside of your control. The shape of the parcels, the two parcels together are not, are, are not uncommon, but you do have that stream running through there. When I first looked at this file, I'm looking at the stream, I'm going, oh, why is that big diamond sitting there I'm straddling the stream? That doesn't make sense to begin with. So that's what gave me some pause. Um, I think um, for me, I would rather see this go back, have you go back and take another look at this and see if you can figure out a better way to skin this cat. Um, as far as a family goes, and this is just my opinion, um, I would look at uh, considering a family trust if you wanna have shared ownership. That's not an official statement. That's just my, our family, our property is a family trust. My property has got a 30% slope driveway. Um, so, um, that would be my recommendation is let's let them take another crack at this and see if there's a better way to make this fit um, that doesn't uh, bump up against the law. Dan, can I ask a question? <laughs> sure. Um, so then are you, are you proposing that the board uh, asking for a motion to uh, deny the application or are you remanding it back to- I'm gonna, I, would, I would rather remand it back to staff. So I believe that the code does allow for that practice. Let me just check here real quick. This is why we carry an attorney with us everywhere we go. I guess I can go ahead and go to. Um, so, uh, in, in practice, it doesn't actually have a huge. Uh, it's not probably not a functional difference, um, other than maybe for appellate purposes. Because if you were to deny, if we're denied, they they'd simply, have to pay they, the application fee again. That's true, right? But they could also just reapply. That would mm -hmm. be fine. That would be fine. If you remand, then yeah, they would. It would still be an open file that they don't have to. That is a difference. And that's what um, I was thinking. I just don't want to have to have them pay the okay. fee again. If but there's a way that they could figure out how to make this work, to have the parcels actually respond to the, the issue of the topography, which is something out of your control, then it's well, I think it's worth taking at least another maybe, crack at it. It may be worth a question to Milton. Milton, if there was a remand, what sort of additional information would be helpful to would there would you embellish or change your opinion? Like, is that a useful practice or would it be better to simply deny? Um, I, I just don't want to uh, further administrative, you know, more administrative practice if it's not going to result in a different outcome. Um, the, uh, yeah, well, what he's talking about is either having to go back and either figure out a way personally to address this yeah. or, or they would, they would have to, so there's several ways to approach it. Four, they, they're allowed four lots currently, and the code only allows for four single family dwellings. So if they wanted five single family dwellings, they're still gonna need another variance. So it would be a different type of application. So they can't just go and have five full-size houses on the property, even if they kept it all intact, it still would require a variance. And so- if we applied a deed restriction on the, on the uh, destruction? Again, though, it still, it, it still requires a variance because our code only allows, you know, right. one, one per density. I just, there's no way we can do a trade, obviously, okay, you know, 
no R, no additional RV dwelling units, no additional. Well, units. And that's that's what I think staff was trying to address. Right. When, when no, we were I can trying see to that. address that. But so, we lowered it by one. That wasn't a lot. No, I understand. And so again, if there's something specific you want us to go back and do, ask the applicant to redraw the site plan to go do a, an analysis of of you know maybe get a surveyor out there and find out where the best lines are. I don't know. I, it's something. Yeah, I just think there's better options here, and it may and it may, be, it may and it may be, be it may be best to just start over as well. But okay. Yeah. So just if they come up with a way. short, they're going to have to come up with a short plat, which means they're going to have to try to figure out how to make that road work, mm -hmm. which is possibly not even doable from what I've heard from everybody here. It, yeah, it's it's rocky. Yeah. It's rocky. It's all kinds right. of things. I don't want to lead them down a path that. I mean, right now they can divide it into four mm -hmm. through an MLD, or they can leave it the same and use family trust or whatever they want to do. They can do a lot of different things and still get to where they want to be. I, I truly don't. I don't see this as I, I don't see this as the right use for this myself. But yeah, yeah. And as far as them um, setting precedents, this is this is a variance request. It does not set precedents. I'm not talking about. Personal. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the, to the audience. Sorry. Um, so that's a fallacious argument to begin with. But it, yeah, it does not set precedent. So it's a uh, variance. Um, when they look planning and we look at each one of these individually, even so much of the zone changes, technically we look at all of them individually. So. Right. So. Um, well, then I, I, you know, I don't have an issue with the motion to deny because I think it's going to be, they, they have some more work on, on there and they need to be able make this work and there's there's some other options out there okay mr chairman i have a procedural question if i may sure you know on can you you know it's after two o'clock you're not supposed to well, wait a second well, we haven't allowed the rest of the yeah we have we, we a lot of the audience has yeah. wanted to uh why don't you participate. you're gonna have to you're off to hold it for afterwards sorry it was just a procedural question i i don't want to make a, a mistake here okay that's fine if you want. If, if the board wants to, if the go ahead, bring it on. Them, we let Brian talk. We let Brian talk for an hour and a half. That's that's be, you know, <laughs> not something that you guys would use for substantive purposes, right? But like for the your ruling because you closed deliberation. But if it's just procedural, go ahead. No problem. Okay, on on both these motions, whether you're going to approve it or deny it, <clears throat> this language in there, this action does not result in the taking of private property. I may suggest you do not have that in your motion because I unless regulatory taking. Evaluation has been done and placed in the record. That that language insinuates that that has been done, and if it has not, I suggest you take that out. I I completely I disagree. I completely disagree. Um, so I the disagree. regulatory takings analysis is something that the applicant or that the agreed property owner can request after the fact, but uh, the, the planning staff and you, the board, can make that determination at this stage, um, having still not completed that based on your review of the file. And if uh, if the regulatory uh, takings analysis is requested after the fact and and uh, found to and some a difference of opinion is found there, it can be addressed. But um, I, I think it's it's okay to leave that uh, in this case. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Are you ready? I yes, yeah, sure. Mr. Chairman, I move to reverse the staff's decision to approve the file. VA003621 requesting a 20% variance in the required minimum lot size from 10 acres to eight acres for the purpose of creating five eight acre lots parcels for family on approximately 40 acres of unplatted land in section 14, Township 55 North Range 3 West, Boise Meridian, Bonner County, Idaho, based on the following conclusions. Um, refer to foregoing conclusions. Jeff, at this point, you would just say for the reasons stated during deliberation. Okay. For all the reasons stated during deliberation, the decision is based upon the evidence submitted up to the time of staff report was prepared and testimony received at this hearing. I further move to adopt. No. Hold on. Don't so adopt the findings of fact. <laughs> and the staff report because the staff report. Yeah, where it's finding facts so to prove, so. yeah. You simply um, say the end. A uh, government move down to uh, private property taking. Not a taking correct. Yeah. Uh, the action that could be taken, if any, to obtain the variance is up. 
What, what is? Uh, Let's go down to this line right here. This action does not. This action does not result in the taking of private property. The action that could be taken, if any, to obtain the variance is to file a new application with the planning department and meet the standards required by Bonner County revised code or appeal the planning and zoning commission decision to the county commissioner. That, that part, <laughs> where we're already at. Nope. That part was for, so the, 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 it would be to appeal this decision to the district court. This would be the plan. If they um, appeal the overturn to the, yeah, the district right. court. Yeah, that the would be appeal the, to the district court. Wow. There you go. Okay. Well, we we'll have to work on those a little bit. Can you repeat that? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. So we that. have a motion, and I will step down from the chair in second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes, and it is three 